fascinating. Okay, so um, I think the, the public are in and um, just on behalf of the panel, I just uh, welcome everyone and respectfully acknowledge the Indigenous heritage of the Waverley local government area and recognise the ongoing Aboriginal tradition custodianship of the land which forms this area. Today, we've got the Waverley Local Planning Panel. Um, we have our two experts, Annalise Chua and Jane Morell and our community member, Sandra Robinson. I'm Jacqueline Townsend, and I'm the chair of today's panel. Um, there's 11 items on the agenda today, so um, with a number of speakers. So um, we will stick to our tight um, speaking time frame of three minutes where we can. And we have declarations of interest, which I'll call on. Um, Jan, I believe you have an interest in one of the items today. Yes, I declare an interest in the property known as 118 McPherson Street, Bronte, non-pecuniary, non-significant, but nonetheless I'll step aside for while the panel de deliberates and determines this matter, as well as for the public session. Thank you. Um, any other declarations of interest from the panel members? None, and I have none. Um, and um, in accordance with the panel's operations procedures, um, the panels inspected the site themselves, some of the properties due to the COVID restrictions and either in person or via VSL inspection. The, um, each speaker presenting to the panel, um, like I mentioned, will have three minutes speaking time and there'll be a time that goes off. Um, if you have almost finished your submissions, um, that would be um, um, just if you could wrap up when you hear that buzzer. And then the panel members, if you can stay online, they may have some questions for you afterwards after you submit. Um, please note that the panel, we've all received the written submission, so there's no need to repeat what you've put in writing already. And, um, and we've also been provided with a hard copy of all the materials supporting all the applications. So if you could just focus each speaker on the relevant planning considerations. Um, that would be appreciated. Also, if there's another speaker, if you could remain silent until they're finished and be respectful of everyone, including panel members and staff present today. Um, and then at the conclusion of the public meeting, we'll consider this application, the applications, um, and then the decisions will go up on the council website in the coming days. So um, the first item we have today um, is DA23-2021. It's 42 Varna Street, Waverley. And that's um, a number of um, submissions were received in writing. And we have one objector today who is Matthew O'Donnell. And he's speaking on behalf of um, James, um, 28 Carlton Street, Waverley. I believe that's correct. Or that's your address, is that right? Matthew, are you here? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, just. Just. Okay. just. Yeah. yeah, I'm speaking on behalf of 28 Carlton Street. Okay, and um, if you could um, start when you're ready. Sure. Um, as you're probably aware, 28 Carlton Street directs, directly abuts the site at the rear. Um, we obviously welcome council's recommendation for refusal. Um, the owners have wanted me to just address the panel to raise a number of concerns they still have um, should the, the development go ahead. Uh, firstly, the scale and bulk is significantly greater than the existing built form on site and it's set on a much larger footprint and projects much further to the rear towards their, their habitable rooms. Um, the overall scale bulk and massing will, will significantly alter how the pair of semi-detached dwellings are viewed within the streetscape um, and will be detrimental to the setting and character appearance of the buildings within the streetscape um, in, in a very dominant and overbearing form. The western elevation is expansive and lacks articulation, uh, which, which adds to this massing and over, overdevelopment. The applicants, as you're probably aware from reading council's report, have chosen not to include basement storage in their gross floor area calculations. However, we consider it's inevitable that this will be used for habitable purposes and not, and not for primary storage. Um, and should it be approved, it would be very difficult for council, unless they undertook regular inspections, to understand if that space is even being used as habitable space. If you include the storage room, obviously it, it's a much more major FSI non-compliance. 
The rooftop deck projects all the way to the rear of the site. Um, it's going to obviously promote noise and, and disturbance being the only outdoor space for the, for the applicants. So I, I don't consider that it would be used infrequently. Um, they, the roof terraces are extremely uncharacteristic to the locality, especially on Barna Street. And the overlooking and increased sense of enclosure and overshadowing to the rear of 40 Barna Street as well will, will, will also be significant. Council's DCP says roof terraces not to exceed 15 square metres, whereas the applicants have gone for 30 square metres, which is excessive. Um, in terms of the 1.6 metre high screens to eliminate overlooking and loss of privacy to our clients, um, they, they, they're not sufficient enough in our view, and in particular, they, they'll be overlooking to their study, which adjoins the northern side of the boundary, our northern side boundary. Uh, the shadow diagrams obviously indicate a significant level of overshadowing occurring in the afternoon to 40 Vine Street's rear garden, which is unavoidable unless the massing is, is pulled back. And then finally, on-street parking in Barna and Carlton Street is already at a limited and oversubscribed capacity and to create a double crossover will result in the loss of an additional car space on the street uh, to the detriment, obviously, of the residents and visitors to dwellings in the locality. Thank you. Um, um, Mr Donald, I just want to confirm that you're, you've seen the council report and the recommendation. So you yes, be correct. speaking in favour of that recommendation. Absolutely. And opposing the application, the development itself in its current form. Correct. State. Correct. Yes. Um, panel, do we have any questions for Mr O'Donnell? None. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You. And um, no there's no speaker today for the applicant, so um, the decision will be up on the website later in the week um, after we've deliberated. So the next item we have is DA 155 2021, 197 Old South Head Road, Bondi Junction. There was a number of um, submissions received. We have no speakers speaking against the recommendation, but we have the applicant here, Helena Rubinson, who's from GSA Planning and Russell Garnett um, from Urban Revolutions. Are you both here just to answer questions or would you like to present I'd like to make a very short presentation. Thank you, Ms. Rubenstein. When you're ready. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to address the panel. Um, if the panel allows it, I've got uh, Russell Garnett of Urban Revolutions who will be available to answer any architectural or, or technical queries. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we're in support of the council officer's uh, favourable assessment, accept the recommendations made in the report and do not wish to challenge any of the conditions. As you'd be aware, the amended plans were submitted in response to issues raised by council during its assessment. So the DA before the panel today includes a development that has the following attributes. It is permissible in the B1 neighborhood center zone. It has a reduced FSR compared to the originally submitted DA. It satisfies all the general commercial retail and local village center DCP provisions. In addition, it will transform a dated structure with limited uh, visual appeal into a commercial premises that will uh, substantially improve the streetscape appearance, maintain an active frontage, and be compatible with development in the locality. To justify the contravention in the building height and FSR standards, uh, written requests under clause 4.6 of the LEP were submitted, uh, which council deemed to be well-founded. So the proposal has a building height uh, bulk scale and character that is compatible uh, in the area. Uh, the additional floor area has been designed with a mansard roof form, which will appear as recessive when viewed from the street. And importantly, the amenity of existing and future residents and adjoining properties will be maintained in respect of solar access, views and privacy. Accordingly, we uh, respectfully re request that panel members consider a favorable recommendation in line with the council officer's report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Mr Garnett, you're just here for any questions. Panel, do we have any questions for either Ms Rubenstein or Mr Garnett? No. Thank you. And um, there's no other speakers on this item, so we'll um, make our decision later today at the determination session. Number three on the agenda today is DA243-2021, which is 14 Bulga Road, Dover Heights. There was a three submissions received and there are no speakers speaking against the uh, recommendation. 
that we have the applicant speaker, Representative Lee Ann Katz from Studio Katz Architecture and Interiors. Ms. Katz, um, are you here? That's you there, is it? Um, would you like to address the panel? Yes, thank you. And um, thank you for the opportunity to speak and address the panel. Um, I guess we're here today just to support uh, the recommendation by the council officer, uh, which is in the assessment report, which is um, recommendation for approval. Um, and also just to note that we don't wish to challenge any conditions um, that want to represent the applicant. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to address the panel in that regard. Thank you. Um, panel, any questions? None, thank you. And again, you're, we'll put our decision up, our determination up later on council's website later in the week. Thank you for coming along. Um, the next item is number four, item four, DA 235 2021, which is 125 Military Road, Dover Heights. No submissions were received and we have a speaker, Rami Tawadros, apologies for my pronunciation. Um, would you like to address? Yes, I would, thank you. Acuro Architects. Aquero Architects, thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm the registered architect uh, who's uh, designed uh, this proposal. Uh, I'd just like to address the, the council just to firstly like thank them for the initial uh, opportunity we had in having a constructive um, uh, collaboration in, the, in working through the, the, the items. Um, we did have an opportunity to propose an amended design. And I guess what I'm trying to achieve uh, today is to have a cons let the council consider a favourable recommendation for us to enable us to finalise the balance of the workable issues. The design has uh, been established with taking a very compatible um, development in the locality, pr proposing something that's not um, foreign to the military road. Um, we're also not impacting neighbours. Um, so we just feel like we've, we've come to a ver very good point where the minor issues are very much workable and it was taken by surprise when we saw um, that this was going to the panel hearing um, um, to be refused. We, um, we are seeking some, some variations, um, but they are things which add value to the land uh, without impacting the neighbours. So we've had discussions, we're open to more, and we really do feel that it's, it's really at the final ends here where we can come to a good compromise and, and resolve this DA. Um, I'd like to maybe if I have some time to, to just quickly go through uh, the, the fact that the, the house does sit well and, and it is taking precedence from the street. So we're not sort of uh, the first off, off the lights here um, with, with in terms of the, the design. The design is very much compatible. It would fit in any other lot on the street. Uh, so we're not trying to establish something new. Uh, however, we do have some minor merits uh, that we are seeking here. Uh, which are minor encroachments to the basement uh, in order to provide suitable amenity for uh, double garage parking. Um, this is something that, you know, we would be willing to, to discuss with council. Um, we're willing to provide amendments. We've actually got them ready to go. So um, we're not here to waste anyone's time. We're here to come to a conclusion that's uh, uh, suitable for the owners and also suitable for council because we'd like to work with council uh, to see these conditions and maybe we can condition it. Um, there are some items which 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 might flag some concern and, and we're willing to to discuss those. So if I could ask the council to give us that opportunity to just work through those final amendments because we're pretty much 90% there uh, with the design. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, panel members, is there any questions of the architect? Yeah. Yep, thank you. Elise. So as I understand what you're asking, you're asking for the matter to be deferred. Is that correct? Is that what you're asking for? Um, if, if, that's, uh, if that's possible, I will, that would be a, a, a good option for us considering where the project's at. Um, and that's on the basis that you have got plans that um, incorporate changes that would address the concerns in the council officer's report, is that? Yes, that's true, saying? that's correct. And council's got those plans or? Um, we, we, ha we have them available. Uh, I, I believe we sent, uh, uh, we've got like an addendum to send. We, we just didn't know if we could send it today, uh, if it's enough time for council to review it, but um, we've got those changes made and ready for us to send to council. 
And just in terms of the time that those sorts of things take, what's the utility of doing that as opposed to just doing a review application under, if you understand um, what I mean? Um, the, like I, I would I would prefer to do a review application, but when you say deferred, is that a matter of us maybe having an opportunity to condition the, the current design and with our changes uh, as part of that? Or a review is more about us having an opportunity to work with council to, to review the, the, the proposal as it stands. Yeah, a review application is where you actually have to submit in a new proposal that requests that if the app, if the panel refuses the application now that you request that our decision be reviewed. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we would do if, if that's what the panel decides. But I guess what I'm trying to achieve here is we, we, we really are at the end of the application and we've had a constructive uh correspondence with council we just feel like it's nearly there and we'd, we'd rather it be uh discussed right, thank you Thanks. it's just that this and just to um further what uh annalisa said it's uh the 8.2 does provide you with that ability to amend your plans and submit that as the review and that can be considered then uh further down the track by another panel so it's just just so that you realise it's, it's um, you, if you got the refusal today, it would be no surprise because, in fact, you go, can go back with that Section 8.2 review and work it through the council. That's yeah. all. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming along. And um, we'll consider what you've said um, when we deliberate later today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item we have is number five, DA 206 2021, which is Bondi Pavilion, um, Queen Elizabeth Drive, Bondi Beach. This is in relation to the installation of building identification signage only. The applicant is the council, which is why it's at the panel today. And we have um, Matt Henderson and Wolfgang Ripperger from council who are going to address the panel. Thank you. So Matt, do you want to go first? Um, yes, I'll start. I don't think um, Wolfgang will address the panel unless there's any technical questions. Um, so good afternoon to the chair and also to the panel mem members. My name is Matt Henderson. Um, I'm representing the applicant, uh, Waverley Council. Um, this is really the final piece uh, to the puzzle for this project. And we obviously uh, support the recommendation of approval. Um, so I'm really here to answer any uh, questions and I'll also defer to any technical questions to Wolfgang. I note that we received um, a response from the Heritage Committee, which um, the panel's got and will consider. Okay. Well. Yeah. Um, any other questions, panel, um, Mr. Henderson? None? None. Okay, great. Thank All right, you very great. Much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you both for coming. Thank you. Um, now we've got item number six, 13 Thompson Street, Tam, um, Tamarama. And um, we have a number, it's DA 1782021. We have a number of written submissions received and we have one um, registered speaker speaking against it, who's Kemper Shaw, who lives at 15 Tom, Thompson Street. And then we also have the applicant here as well to address. So, um, Kemper Shaw, you? Yep, present. Present? Okay, yep. great. So um, when you're ready, you can commence. No problem, thank you. First one to say thanks to the panel for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'd also like to say I'm not against people building. I also live in a large house and I kind of feel the new owner of 13 Tom Street would be a very good neighbor. Um, I reluctantly accept the loss of the solar access, but found it strange that the loss was not directly addressed in the WLPP assessment. Um, with the current assessment, my main concern is still around work. privacy. The WLPP assessment has addressed a few of those issues, and I strongly support the recommendation that the ground terrace height is not increased from the current level as of 32.72, but the condition needs to be clarified. Condition number 2G doesn't appear to achieve what the council intended by reading of the assessment report and is ambiguous and lacks certainty. I'm asking the panel to take particular care in rewording that condition to reflect its intended purpose. I have had both my planners read the condition and both tell me it is open to too much interpretation for the council or for a certifier to enforce. It should specify that there needs to be multiple steps down from the Glen 4 to the terrace 
as it's a 0.58 meter drop, it needs to specify that it is for the whole terrace, both covered, uncovered, and the proposed landscaping. It also needs to specify that the boundary wall will have a min height of at least 1.5 meters as it currently does. Overall, I'm still very concerned about the privacy given the floor to ceiling windows that are facing east of my property, along with the middle terrace. The current design allows people to look back from multiple windows and terraces directly into my late main living spaces, including bedrooms, bathrooms, and the living room. Because the house is located further north than mine, it seems possible to add directional privacy screens to block the view back into my living areas, but still have no impact on the view. I am seeking two additional conditions from the panel to protect my privacy. The first one being directional privacy screens to protect the views back towards my living areas, which would go a long way to protect and preserve my existing privacy. I would also like to note that in the WPLL assessment, that there is, it notes that there currently is a window where the 1.03 window is going, and thus there is no difference. But in fact, that current window is in a stairway void and no one can stand next to the window to look into the current living areas. Two, the middle terrace is being raised to a higher elevation, extended further and drastically increased in size compared to the existing terrace. So the design also allows for people to stand much closer to the property line than currently. The elevated and extended design will allow people to have direct views into my main living area of my house. This terrace should be made to comply with the maximum terrace size as it currently is three times larger than what the code allows. One solution would be to pull the eastern edge of the terrace back from the property line to be further than the proposed 1.2 meters, which would not affect the views or the enjoyment of the terrace. I'm also in support of the other recommendations, especially the items that reduce excess excavation and potential damage to the water table and adjacent properties. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have questions? Um, um, look, just a quick question. Yes, um, thank you. Um, would you mind just going cutting to the chase and commenting on the actual changes you want? Because you're, um, I've scribbled a little yeah. note. No problem. Uh, you, you've, you've asked for clarification on um, 2G, which is clear. Yeah. Um, and then you've also mentioned a privacy screen and a um, terrace. Can you Correct. just provide a quick summary on each of those two no additional items? 2G is, it just needs to be very um, yep. clarified. And so yep. I think if you want me to list out those in there, but it's a 0.58 meter draw and it specifies only one step from the ground floor to the terrace. So obviously you need more steps to handle a 0.58 meter draw. And then it doesn't specifically mention the whole terrace which is both a covered, uncovered, and a proposed landscaping area. So it should make sure just to clarify that the whole terrace, including all of those different areas, is at the same level. And then the other one is just to confirm also that the boundary wall, which currently sits at 1.5 meters, would still not be lowered. The second one is the, to protect the privacy, is the directional privacy screens. The current proposed house is much further north. The views are directly east, which there is huge amounts of ways to put a privacy screen in that would stop people being able to stand at the window and look backwards, which doesn't have a view, into the living areas of my property and shouldn't affect view or anything else of the design. And the third one, or the third comment was that the proposed terrace, which will be the main kind of entertaining area of the house, is excessively large and kind of is being raised. So it actually overlooks directly into the terrace of my house and is very close to the property line compared to the current usage. And if that is, if the edge of that is able to be pulled back a bit from the property line to comply a bit more to the 1.5 or even further to reduce the size of the terrace, that will drastically increase the privacy on my side, but not reduce the enjoyment or the views. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions, panel? We've got the architect here, I think, Tobias Partners. 
um, he might be able to address some of those proposed changes for you. Is Richard Peters here? Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Richard Peters. Thanks for the opportunity to address the panel. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. You've just, sorry, before you start, um, you would have heard some proposed changes by Mr. Shaw, the neighbour of your client. Um, in your submission, would you be able to also address what is being proposed and, and how, if anything, could be done to respond to those concerns? Sure. Uh, yes, we, um, prior to lodging the development application, we were in consultation with both immediate neighbours. Um, we worked very closely with uh, Mr. Shaw and also with the owners, uh, the Hugginses at number um, 11, Thompson Street. Um, we acknowledge their concerns and we've incorporated a lot of considerations into the design. And it's important to note that the existing house has actually a projection way beyond where our proposed rear facade line is. Our rear facade line has been significantly set back. It steps in, in step with the adjoining properties. So there's a, a rear de facto building line that we sit within. Um, and that's provided equitable view sharing um, for the surrounding properties as well, which we've also demonstrated in our application. So in speaking with council, we've pro provided council additional information along the way as was required. And I believe council have adequately addressed uh, the justification for the current design that we have on the table and they have recommended it for approval with some conditions and we support council's recommendation for approval and we think the conditions are reasonable. So we don't wish to challenge them there are also privacy um, devices attached to three of the windows on the eastern facade of the building. And that was called up as a condition for being obscure glass um, or, or privacy screen. We're happy with the existing conditions as they're proposed and we don't seek to change them any further. And I don't think reducing the size of our terrace or setting it back any further has any additional impact than what's currently the case. As I explained, there was previously building bulk in this location, which is no longer. And that's, that's it? Well, in terms of the, the rear uh, terrace level, uh, again, we, if you look at our application, we did propose extensive landscaping along the Eastern boundary to address the concerns of our neighbor. And that basically discourages people from walking to the boundary and looking across into the neighbor's property. We've also provided an additional 1.2 metre setback on the northeastern corner of the property, again, to alleviate this concern. Uh, further to that, it is very important to note, and this is identified in the officer's report, that it's very typical for all of these properties on Thompson Street, on this side of Thompson Street, to step down towards the view. And it's very common for each of the properties to be able to walk to the edge of their boundary and look over adjoining properties towards the view. Unfortunately, that's just the situation of the context. And it seems to be something that everybody enjoys. Our proposed terrace level, which lifted it up by 580 millimetres, puts it in step with its neighbours. So basically, on the uh, western side, so to number 11, we have um, a 1.1 metre drop to us. And then if our terrace was placed where we originally proposed it, we would have a similar drop to the neighbour on the eastern side. If we maintain the level that they've requested, the drop between properties is a mere 300 millimetres, which results in a higher fence for our client and diminished views from that level, which is out of step for all of the adjoining neighbours. But once again, as I said, I'm happy with council's recommendation and I'm happy to accept the conditions proposed by the council, but I don't think it's reasonable to impose any additional conditions as is suggested by Mr. Kemper Shaw. Okay, um, questions panel? Yeah, Annalise. 
Um, just going along the, uh, I think it's the eastern elevation, which faces 15 Thompson Street. Um, so that's on um, what's your DA number? DA 2003. 178 of 2021. So you've got, um, as I understand it, the W204 A and B, that's proposed to have some privacy treatment in the conditions and also W104 privacy treatment. Um, that's correct. Can you just explain W106? Because I can't see where that is on the actual plan. It should be referred to on the eastern elevation. Yeah, I can see it on the eastern elevation, W106, and there's something that says clear glass. Yeah, so that's, um, if you look at the street entry, uh, that is the window that's on the western side of the courtyard that's, proposed within the property. So if you, if you, if you come in, um, you've got the garage at the street, which is presented as a single story structure um, in keeping with all the other single story structures in the street. Um, and basically our, our entryway is on the Western side of the site. And there's a, there's a sort of entry lobby and a stair and that window is, is, is facing the courtyard. Okay, but that says W206 on the plan, whereas on the elevation it says W106. It's W106 on, I'm just looking at the plans here. And I apologise if there's a typo, but that is, from my understanding, the window that we are referring to. So you haven't got another one proposed on the eastern side? Because it's shown on the eastern elevation, and why would Sorry, you? No, no, no. There's there's a, there's a window adjoining the staircase, which is W one hundred and six, which is on the western side of the courtyard, and then we we do have an additional window on the eastern side, which is adjoining the garage. Perhaps that's the window that you're referring to. On well, the that's saying on the plan is W two zero nine. It's just that I'm wondering why you'd show on an elevation a W one zero six if it's something that you can't see, if it's, you know, somewhere else back from the elevation. Sorry, I'm and looking at the plans and I'm a little bit confused as to what you're asking. Um, I have a 1006 shown as clear glass on the eastern elevation and also on the, on the floor plan I have a 1006. Which, which floor is, plan? Uh, DA 1.003. Okay, so it's... It's in set. It's on the courtyard, so it's it's a long way. It from is the in boundary. set. Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. So it's very far away from the eastern boundary. Okay. So it's on that level. All right. It okay. just didn't need to be shown on the elevation. All right. I think that was clarifying that one. Sorry, that was got a bit confusing there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was looking at. Glad we got um, that. It it's, was just shown on the elevation as going, to me, it looked like it was going over the two levels and I couldn't see where it was shown on the um, Understood. other level. All right, that was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just one question from me. Um, the comment of Mr Shaw about the interpretation of condition 2G and the, the ambiguity, um, would you like to comment on that? Are you understanding what the condition's asking you to do? Um, 2G is the, the condition that's um, asking us to lower the proposed ground floor terrace level to match what is currently the lower ground floor terrace level of the existing house. Yes, that's right. Yeah, look, I mean, obviously we would prefer what it is that we've set out to apply for in our application and the drawings. I'm not asking but what you I, to question I, it. I'm just asking, do you understand what the condition is asking you to do? Oh, I, I absolutely change. understand what it's asking to do. The intent of the condition is to maintain the existing lower terrace level for the existing house, which would leave us with a 1.58 metre tall wall at the eastern boundary, which would effectively prevent us from having views from our ground floor terrace. Whereas, as I said earlier, every other property has the benefit of a view from their ground floor terrace level. Okay. So I'm just trying to understand, are you objecting to that condition or 
Look, I'm I'm not going to challenge the condition. It's the recommendation of council. I respect right. council's assessment. I think they've done a very thorough assessment of the application and, you know, I'm not going to challenge them. I'm just explaining what they are for the benefit of the panel to assist them in their decision-making um, and the comments that were received earlier. Thank you. Understanding that. Thank you. Um, nothing further? No, thank you. Thank you both for coming and speaking and um, and for taking the time to address and assist the panel on that item. Um, again, the determination will be made later today and will be put up on the council website um, in the coming days. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, the next item is number seven to Mackenzie Street Bondi Junction. We've got no objectors. Um, but we have, um, oh, this is why I got confused before. Okay. So, um, but we've got a one submission from um, the neighbour at 8 Mackenzie, but they're not here to speak. And the applicant representative, Matthew O'Donnell from Mob Urban, is here to speak on behalf of the applicant. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, I got confused. I knew your name was on this one, but. No, I know. That's fine. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm fine, thank you. When you're ready. I'll you line up for this one. Um, obviously, I, I thank you for accepting the uh, applicant's email as they sent through and passing on to panel members yesterday. Ultimately, um, as the position was stated, they would they want to maintain their 40 year old first floor uh, rear addition um, rather than lose it as uh, the third commencement three suggests. Um, They've, as you're aware from my message yesterday, they submitted amended plans to that effect so that the, uh, the requirements of the relevant rear setback control, DCP control, were, were, not, um, were not necessary in, in relation to determining application. As, as, as you've probably seen, council determined it on, the, on an older set of plans, uh, despite multiple attempts by us to, to express to, to the planners that the applicant had no intention or no preference at all to lose their, their first floor rear addition. And if they'd have known that was going to ever be a, 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 an alternative, they would never have lodged the DA in the first place because, as you can appreciate, no one likes to lose a substantial portion of their existing house. Um, as I pointed out, they've undertaken a number of uh, reinstatement of some of the heritage uh, facade through reinstating the first floor balcony, proposing a dormer to match the adjoining terrace and, and, and generally just improve the general streetscape appearance. And so to have the rear addition that's existed for 40 odd years to be taken from them, but people will still, but, 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 but the position of council is that they still require, they, they'd like to do that, but also have, have the, the uh, heritage facade reinstated is, is unreasonable in, in the applicant's view. Um, so I'm unsure if the panel intends on determining this application based on the plans submitted yesterday that were previously submitted to council or alternatively on the ones that the report was written on. If it is the ones the report was written on, if we were to, if we were to keep that additional 960 um, raising of the floor to ceiling height um, for that rear habitable room, then I still consider there's no additional sense of enclosure or scale bulk or massing that will occur from raising that first floor roof. There's no loss of views or overlooking or loss of privacy to the neighbours. Shadow diagrams demonstrate that the neighbouring four-storey apartment building overshadows most of the area in the morning anyhow, which is 21 metres higher than the ground floor at 20 foot to Mackenzie. And it's clearly, um, which is clearly accepted by council when they approve that building. Overshadowing from raising the bedroom one roof also results in minimal overshadowing of the neighbouring yards and not window openings that are beyond the adjoining terrace and the rear yard the adjoining terrace at number four already receives no direct solar access now, so therefore raising one bedroom, one roof uh, has no additional impacts. So as stated, the preference is the plans submitted, uh, the, 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 the version that was submitted yesterday that had been submitted to council. However, if the panel's not in a position to do that, we would obviously like this deferred commencement condition removed but in relation to condition number three. Okay. 
panel, do we have any questions for Mr. O'Donnell? No, none. That's it. So thank you. Um, what we'll do is, is, is what what set of plans will you be determining the application on? So obviously the applicants listening in on this meeting on the public stream, and that's going to be a question that I'm going to be asked. So if you're in a position to answer that now, that would be appreciated. We've been there'll be the panel will be determining it on the application and the report provided by council and the plans that the report responds to, and we have been provided with the other documents. Um, that were provided yesterday and um, um, how much weight's given to that will be determined by the panel um, during our determination session. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Bye. Um, number 8, DA 40 2021. I think this is the one, Jan, you're going to be leaving us on. I am. And if you could um, put me in the waiting room, please, Rosalina. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that done? Uh, yes, she's in the waiting room now. Okay, great. Thank you, Rosalina, for doing that. Um, so um, expert member Jan Morales had to leave because she has a con declared a conflict. So there'll be three panel members um, determining this application, DA 40 2021 118 McPherson Street, Bronte. Um, there were a number of submissions received. Um, we've got written submissions received, which the panel all have. And there's three speakers today um, who are objectors to the application. And we have um, a number of people who are here to um, represent the applicant, which we'll hear from after the objectors. So on behalf of Edward Robert Taylor at 3 Yanko Avenue, Bronte, uh, Mike Taylor, are you here? Yes, I am. Hello. Thank you. So when you're ready, Yes, um, so I, my father, uh, Edward Taylor, lives at 3 Yanko Avenue, Bronte. He lives um, directly at the back of the, um, um, the apartment block. Uh, he's been living there for 30 years, and his major um, objection is around the rear extension. Um, he, it, we believe quite firmly that it's going to um, affect a number of things, the early morning sun, he gets um, privacy, um, concerns about additional noise coming across, um, and also um, down the track affecting our potential or his potential view um, from the property. So um, as, as was said in our submission, we um, are definitely in opposition to um, that proposed rear extension in particular. Um, also, um, concerned about noise from any rooftop as well. Okay, so panel, do we have um, any questions for Mr. Taylor? None. Um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for coming. Emma Maxwell, you're from 120 McPherson Street, Bronte, I believe. Yes, um, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Hi. How are you? Thank you very much for the opportunity to address the panel. So I'm in the apartment block next door on the east side, Unit 4, um, and my main bedroom and balcony are adjacent to the building site, as is my second bedroom, which is also used as a study. Um, and it does seem to me and to others in this building that the um, building site has failed to think about the impacts on our building. Um, each of the architecturals, not only for this um, revised plans, but the ones previous have, have omitted the windows of our second bedroom. So that would be for my building, my apartment, as well as for unit eight above. Um, and so it does seem that there has not been consideration if you look at the diagrams for the solar access and um, the shadows, the, whether that um, the impacts have not been considered on our bedrooms here. Um, and in that regard, I strongly object then to um, the side setback if that is to become further non-compliant than what it already is. Um, also then um, with the rear setback that it is not clear to me that it is in line with our existing balcony, which is the predominant um, setback of the street. Um, certainly there was no C accompanying these current architecturals and the previous architecturals, uh, sorry, previous C 
does say that it would encroach or extend beyond our current balcony. Um, I am also concerned then that there is a roller door placed directly next to my second bedroom, um, which would uh, to the waste room, which would create a lot of noise as well and be used frequently. Um, I was surprised to see that the rooftop terrace has been put back into this third set of plans. It was there in the first one, and I know that a lot of people objected against this rooftop terrace. Um, it would create a terrible precedent for Bronte Village. It is not in keeping with the area. There aren't ones around here. And in line with the other parts of the Waverley Development Control Plan, it's oversized. Um, it would be for access for those two studios, Studios 1 and 2, which are small anyway, and it would be used um, for extension of their living space. We know that they don't have much light or air in, in those two studios, so it would be used frequently, which would have significant noise impacts for us. Um, not only obviously for me, but for our entire building. And then of course the precedent that sets for Bronte community. Um, there are courtyards at the back of the development site. Um, and I would like to ensure that they are not going to be used for dining for those commercial tenancies. It was there in the um, original plans as our fresco dining. And I just wanna make sure that that is clear that they are not for our fresco dining. Again, because of the significant noise impacts and also light pollution on our main bedrooms and balcony areas. Um, the current um, uh, plans also don't address existing issues to the building next door. Um, I know my time's up, so I'll leave it there. I know there's another speaker for us who will go through those. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for articulating the issues so clearly for us. Um, any um, questions? Of um, really just a, a, a short question. Emma, you, have you read the officer's recommendation, which is to refuse the Yes, okay. and I support okay. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sandra. So um, the next speaker is Peter McQueen, who's from uh, 124 McPherson Street. Mr McQueen, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, good, good afternoon, panel members. My name is Peter McQueen. Thank you for providing me the opportunity to address you. I support the recommendation to refuse the application uh, and denoting my particular interest given the immediate proximity of my residence to the proposed development and its significant impact on my amenity. I've been the owner occupier of number 8, 120, 128. Uh, it's 124, very confusing, but um, <laughs> it's, we'll, we'll refer to it as 124 McPherson Street. I've been there since 2004. Uh, it's located on the second floor in the northwest corner of the property. My main uh, uh, bedroom and balcony and my second bedroom, which also operates as a study uh, home office, um, much as uh, Ms. Maxwell's does um, below below me, is in use at all hours, um, and it's uh, directly located next to the existing building at 118 McPherson. I commend the work of the council in its uh, preparation of a comprehensive assessment report. I'd like to bring to the panel's particular attention uh, issues of concern, and these are firstly the existing and future use of the uh, for the ground floor, uh, floor spaces. The C states that the existing use of the two set, uh, spaces on the site will be retained. One of these is currently an Indian takeaway dining restaurant. The overpowering cooking odors and smells that emanate from that restaurant at the front on both sides and behind 118 McPherson are quite intolerable and unacceptable. They require me to keep the window on my second bedroom closed seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. due to the odours. Uh, that has been the subject of prior complaints and concerns to council. Also, the rear ground floor open space of that restaurant is used for storage, rubbish, and other um, unsavoury and unhygienic activities. The uh, continuation of this existing uh, use in the future is totally unacceptable. Accordingly, I oppose any future food, re restaurant, retail use of the ground floor spaces. Secondly, traffic in Virgil Lane. This is the lane behind both uh, 118 and 124. Uh, this is uh, this laneway, which uh, is um, 
uh, actually a two-way street, but it only has one car width, so it's a very narrow lane. All deliveries to the retail commercial premises of 118 McPherson, contrary to the current practice, which happens to all commercial premises in, in, in Mackenzie Street, uh, are um, they are the, the commercial the commercial premises in that street. Uh, they come down the lane. This uh, this uh, makes Virgil Lane quite inaccessible uh, as a laneway to the existing private car parking and garages, which open out onto the laneway. My third and final point relates to uh, inadequate parking. The development application does not address this significant issue. The C deals with it very dismissively. Um, car parking in the locality, as we would all know, is a highly sought after commodity. The, the development will simply exacerbate the existing chronic parking sh um, shortfall in the Bronte Village area. Uh, it must be noted that the five existing car spaces at the rear of, of our building, of, of 124 McPherson Street, are in, on the architectural plans described as commercial. Uh, they, are, they are not commercial, they are the private property of 124 McPherson and are for the sole use of its occupiers and their visitors. They're not for public use and currently they're being used illegally by the occupiers of 118 and their abuse would be increased should the development proceed without the um, provision of sufficient parking facilities on site to those occupiers. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. McQueen. Um, panel, do we have any questions? Mr. McQueen? No, none. Thank you. Um, we'll now hear from the applicants. Um, there's three listed, um, Mr. Phillips, Hanson and Waghorn. Um, are you all going to address? Is one going to address or you're here simply to answer questions? Oh, uh, understanding, uh, Madam Chair, we only have three minutes. I will address and David Waghorn will address. Uh, sorry, I'm Simon Hanson. Thank you. Um, and Thank James you. is just here just in case we have any questions on heritage. Um, so primarily me and David. So when you're ready. Okay. Um, so I, I'll, I'll just, we have only got three minutes. I'll cut to it quickly. Um, this uh, application shouldn't be refused based on the FSR. Um, we have clarified the FSR as 0.955 to one. I have uh, the registered surveyor, Chris Norton has uh, verified the site is in fact 321.7 square metres. So um, the determinative um, uh, issues in council's assessment um, isn't uh, in fact true. Um, so we are primarily uh, under, the, uh, under the FSR that's permissible on this site. Um, so I'll just go through to the other issues. Um, the roof terrace is sitting um, relatively central to the, the proposal. Um, it is of a, a very similar elevation to the terraces um, at 120, the development to the east. Um, so I just want the panel to understand that the, the elevation of our roof terrace is similar to a, a standard kind of uh, balcony that sits off the apartments in 120. So that's sort of uh, primarily the sort of the, the, the first point. But um, and in addition, um, we have uh, that it also sits uh, co-located to one Yanko and uh, the backyard of one Yanko. Um, and one Yanko is adjacent to McPherson Street. So um, I don't think that the um, acoustic privacy of one Yanko um, is uh, going to be affected by our, our, our terrace. Um, I think that it's um, probably more of an issue of being adjacent to McPherson Street. Um, I will also point out that this is a heritage item um, and one that the heritage uh, uh, officers of the council uh, um, do not have an issue with, do not have an issue with this proposal and none of the other referral departments of council have an issue with this proposal. So um, there is another question in the report about amenity. Um, I'd just like to talk through amenity. Studios three and four receive good sunlight and good ventilation. We are using the existing setbacks. Yes, that, that, that is true. We are using the existing windows, um, but they are of a minor nature for studios three and four. Um, the primary uh, um, 
vista for those two um, studios uh, is to the north. They have a nice um, amenity in the balconies and 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 great ventilation and solar access. Um, Studio One um, does face south. Um, we are using the existing facade fenestrations, but we are upgrading them. And we are also restoring the central arched window that faces McPherson Street. Um, so we are using the existing um, fenestrations and we are um, uh, placing a stair over the existing stair. We are replacing that stair and making it compliant. It's, it's more like a ladder at the moment. Um, and that's the one from ground floor to first floor. And we also have a shared uh, roof terrace. Uh, time's up already, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, my request an extension, Just Madam Chair. If you could be quick, yep. Keep going. Okay, so, yep. Right. So, um, so yeah. So the extension. Uh, so I'll just look. So the amenity to to, to um a, part, a studio uh, one, uh, it does receive solar access and it does have it does achieve cross ventilation as does um, studio two, albeit the cross ventilation is achieved through operable solar uh, so skylights. Um, and uh, I might just hand over to David if you've got anything to add, David. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Chair. Um, just in terms of clarifying this, uh, the, the, the report did raise a number of issues in relation to DCP non-compliances. Um, we say to that that, yes, we acknowledge there are DCP non-compliances, but the fact is that this is a heritage item, it is an interwar flat building, and it is in a commercial zone. These are three layers that restrict, uh, well, let's, let's say restrict the ability of us to strictly comply with the DCP requirements. We do acknowledge setback, side setback and landscaping, um, but it, to accommodate the existing building on the site and any proposed new works to the building, it is simply not possible to comply with these requirements. Um, those layers and the fact that uh, Section 4.153A of the Act compels Council to be flexible in applying the controls, we think that this, we think that we've provided a reasonable alternative solution to complying with the controls. We maintain the amenity of adjoining properties through the provision of privacy screenings, setbacks of roof terraces, and we improve the amenity of the existing building. The existing building is a two-storey, two-bedroom, uh, two two-bedroom apartments on the upper level. Those two bedrooms uh, do not provide any private open space. They provide a centrally located lounge room, which gets minimal to nil solar access. And we are proposing four studio apartments. So there will be no increase in intensity because there is four bedrooms in the existing and there is four bedrooms in the proposal. The proposal that we're provided provides what we say is superior to the existing because each apartment does uh, contain private open space, albeit studios one and two do have a roof terrace. And they do provide for a high level of amenity with the use of operable skylights and existing windows. Uh, the fact that we use a roof terrace is not uh, atypical within the locality as within the Bronte Shopping Centre, the building directly opposite us at 129 to 131 has a roof terrace and it is highly used by the occupants. We are in comparison providing a relatively small roof terrace. It is screened, it is set back from the street and will not be overtly visible. And we say provides the, uh, the occupants with a better amenity than the existing situation. For all these reasons, we think that uh, the application should be uh, approved, but acknowledged there are some issues in relation to information, and therefore we would respectfully request the panel defer the matters, because we think that the issues are entirely capable of resolution, uh, and we'd like to continue to explore that with Council. Great, thank you very much. Um... Do we have any questions um, for either Mr. Hanson or Mr. Um, is it David? David Waghorn? Correct. Okay. Do we have any questions for uh, Mr. Hanson or Waghorn panel? No. Yeah. I've, oh, got, uh, I've got one question. Um, 
Just in terms of the amenity of Unit Studio One and Two, did you consider at all actually having that as a, a combined um, unit as opposed to it being split into the two studios? And therefore you wouldn't need your roof terrace and you presumably could get some sort of um, open space facing you, the street. You, you would still need a... Uh, even if you combined it, you would still not be able to provide the open space because of the, the layout of the, the two rear studios and the fact that we've got the heritage layer. We, we can't effectively punch into the front setback like number 120 McPherson has. Um, because, yeah, as I said, the interwar flat building and the heritage item controls, uh, even if you did combine them as one apartment, the amenity impacts would not be significantly improved because... The, the apartment would rely on the same windows or skylights to provide the amenity. All right, thanks. Nothing further? No other um, questions? Could I just, just based on what um, David just said about the rooftop terrace, just want to reinforce uh, after hearing a bit more detail, just on definitely the opposition to, to how it's going to affect our property at Three Yanko Avenue. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you all for coming and taking, giving us your time today and addressing the issues in the report and your objections. Um, the panel will um, consider and deliberate over this matter um, after the public meeting and with the um, decision being put up on the council website um, in the coming days. Okay, so thank you very much for coming along. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Thank you, panel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, now, so now we have item number nine. Just, um, can we let um, Jan back in? Jan's back. Great. Thank you. Um, we have um, number nine now on the agenda, DA121-2021, which is 21 to 23 Imperial Avenue, Bondi. And um, we had some submissions received, which the panel has got. There's no registered speakers against the application, but we have Mr. Dowman, Nicholas Dowman from Lighthouse Planning to address the panel. Um, Nicholas, is that you? Yep. It is, hi. Thank you. Hi. Um, when you're ready, did you were you here to answer questions or did you want to actually address? I, I can answer questions, but it was largely uh, to address the panel, if that's okay. Well, when you're ready. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm the town planning consultant um, assisting the applicant on this DA and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. To begin, we fully appreciate council's assessment of the project and clearly support the recommendation for approval um, I'm speaking today only in relation to a single matter, and that is the proposed contribution for the loss of existing rent, affordable rental housing. So currently the assessment considers all four units to be low rental dwellings in accordance with the affordable rental housing set and proposes a condition seeking $283,275, and that's at condition seven. Uh, the applicant has been in the challenging position of only coming to own the property last year. And it's been difficult to find readily available information regarding the weekly rent in the previous years. And this has been somewhat coupled with council's requests for additional information regarding the previous rental records coming relatively late in the assessment process. So it's been a, a hastened process since then to try and provide that information in the limited time frame. As part of that, I think the day before the cutoff of the panel meeting or, or even the day of um, as part of that rush time frame, a set of indicative annual averages was sent from a real estate agent and was emailed to council in support um, of the application. I believe that they did um, support the application in terms of not being low rental as they, they demonstrated annual averages that were above the annual average of the quarterly medians. Um, nonetheless, that's somewhat academic exercise and they were understandably taken as rental records uh, by the housing officer without that context and form the basis for the current conclusion that all the dwellings are low rental dwellings at some point in the previous five years. Uh, nevertheless, 
since that cutoff period for the application to go to this panel meeting, um, there's been ongoing conversations primarily between the project architect and the um, planning officer and housing officer, I believe, which is much appreciated. And we um, appreciate council's openness in that um, process. And as part of that additional information has been provided to support the rental status of each of the units. I think our understanding is that that additional information still might present a likelihood that um, there is a, a low rental dwelling as part of the development. But in summary, it, it'd be really appreciated if in deliberation and uh, presumptuous, but determination of this DA, this recent information and correspondence provided to council could be discussed. And if that could be considered in the preparation of condition seven and any associated contribution. Thanks. Um, panel members. Um, just a point of clarification, um, Mr. Dalman. Um, the same agent provided both pieces of information, the, the, the <coughs> first rent levels and the second rent uh, the, I think the, fir the first time around, what was provided as annual averages was provided from the real estate agent that was possibly the, the previous agent for the preceding years. And the information that was provided since that cutoff has been from the two agents, the one that currently looks after the property and the one that previously did under previous owners. <coughs> right. And, and there was a difference in methodologies. One used an average and the other used an actual or just trying essentially, to... Essentially, I, I it's, yeah, it's, it's somewhat come through the rush process of it as well. So it's essentially the real estate agent was initially um, requested an, annual averages just to sort of determine what would be sort of uh, an indicative figure for each year for each apartment. The way I read that was that in each instance, that average annual was higher than the average of the quarterly median. So if, if you added up the quarters, the quarterly medians from that rent and sales report for the year and divided it by four in each instance, that figure was lower than that annual average provided. So theoretically it would have followed at that higher price, but again, it, it was somewhat um, academic, but that's what was initially provided because that was sort of rushed and we didn't realize that um, the process was locked in for the panel from there in, we were sort of looking to, to continue that um, conversation with council. The, the real estate agents were given the time to sort of provide greater research and sort of understand what it was currently being rented out and some of those sort of ex external factors in their understanding of the area to just provide quarterly rates instead um, that they believed it would have been rented out. maybe this might be able to be dealt with after if there is a, an acceptance or determination of the recommendation as um, council submits, maybe this could be dealt with under a modification. Um, if, if, it's, if there's not enough there or if it's not, not enough time, my, um, my understanding is that we prefer not to defer the application. So um, it, it's just, what information can be considered as part of this assessment. It's a little bit confusing and it's quite a significant issue for both council and your, your, your client. So yeah, agreed. Um, agreed. Um, it's, I think on the information provided, it is a little bit difficult for the panel to try and make some um, finding on that, I would feel, if we were to um, consider what you're asking. So um, maybe if we do... Um, determine um, as councils recommended that it may be something you can bring up in a modification application later, which might be a better way. It is an option. Yeah, it's an option. Absolutely. All right. If there's no further questions, um, that's it. Thank you for um, addressing and um, we'll make a determination after the public hearing and the um, decision will be up on the website. Um, in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number 10, which is DA 204-2020, which is 575-577-581 and 581A, Old South Head Road, Rose Bay. Um, there was a number of written submissions received, which we've all got. Um, I want to thank um, 
two of the objectors who are coming along. One, of course, is a strata manager for 571 um, Old South Head Road. So thank you for coming and speaking as a collective. Um, and um, so that's Marina Preister. Preister, apologies for pronunciation. And then um, we've got Peter Belafonte, and then we've got the applicants' representatives, which we'll go to after we hear from the objectors first. So, um, Marina, are you there? Yes. Hi. Hi. You might want to, can you turn that up or speak up a little bit? Just a bit. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for allowing me to speak to the panel. As, um, Chair mentioned I represent the owners of 571 on Saturday Road, so I'm the strata manager for that building. Serena, I'm sorry, yeah. but now you're all scratchy and it's not clear, so now we can't hear. No? Yep, that's it, perfect. Okay, I'll try again. So I, being um, representative of 571 Old South Head Road uh, as a strata manager, I believe my owners don't have any objections to DA. There are just a few observations and comments. So number one, um, there seems to be no mention of dilapidation report um, prior to digging and starting the work. Um, so we very adjacent to the Block B, oh, sorry, Block C of this um, development so that would be um, strongly recommended I guess from my side. Um, proposed substation that um, is um, right next to the northern driveway of our building um, there's just a few comments about that if it's in any way possible to relocate that alternatively um, if it's possible to get specification of acoustics for that um, substation. It's just concerned that it could be a little bit too loud for where it's gonna be located. And the last one is um, just observation about the height of building C. It seems that the proposed height is slightly higher that's allowable. Um, and we're obviously concerned about the overshadowing to our building. That's all. Um the sub, can you just say what the, sub, the proposed substation, you're worried about the noise, the acoustic noise from the substation? I've been told that one of my owners have um, a hearing condition where they can hear all the buzzing. So they're just really concerned that it's going to make, they don't know what it's going to make in terms of noise. So that, that's just one of the things they're discussing. Okay. And it's quite a large box. It's, it's obviously... Um, servicing the large complex that's proposed so that's so that's more the location of it and the acoustics if it is kept yeah. in position okay right any questions panel no none thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. um peter peter belavante uh, thank you thank you thank madam you. chair thank you for allowing me to address the panel i realize that the panel is proposing to endorse this development um, I represent long-term owner occupiers of um, four homes in Princess Street, as you know, near Building B uh, in the subject site. Uh, like Ms. Prazer, I'm quite concerned about uh, the potential impact on our homes, our structures, uh, and we need clarity on dilapidation uh, reports to protect us. Um, despite the proposed deep excavation the height of all three buildings substantially exceed the 12.5 metre height restrictions. And surely in this regard, the cap should be inclusive of service plant wherever it's situated. Otherwise, there's no effective cap. In, their most, in, in, a, in the most recent report, 31st of August 21, LK planning state, these RLs confirm that the highest measurable point in the amended plans is located on building B where the plant screening on the roof reaches a height of RL 14.14 above the existing ground level, causing a 1.64 vari metre variation to the height standard or 13.1%. I refer the panelists to drawing A2501, where it's clearly stated the height at the top is, is 44.83, the, 
The height at ground level is clearly 30.43, 30 a difference of 14.4 metres. This is in excess of 1.9 metres, an effective breach of 15.2%, not 13.1. So it's an understatement, we believe, of the breach of more than 2%. The engineering report does not indicate that the plant needs to be installed on the roof, but if it did, it needs to be placed surely within the 12.5 metre cap. Many properties have exhaust fans above, uh, above underground car parks and garbage areas, not on the roof of the properties. Considering the ample size of the site, the bulk of exhaust plant surely could be repositioned. It appears that a choice has been made to erode the 12.5 metre cap at the expense of neighbours. At 3.21 in the report to your panel, the building services control state and I've quoted extracts. Services are to be integrated into the design of buildings, garbage rooms, mailboxes, fire, hydrants, downpipes, and plant rooms. Services on the roof, not to be seen from street or impact public or private views. These are extracts from that. On page 579, it said, it is likely that the plant height, which exceeds the development standard, would impact only on sky views and not and not the significant city skyline view. And right at the end, it says, given the above analysis, it is considered that any potential view impact from surrounding properties is not unreasonable. Well, I'm terribly <coughs> sorry, but we believe given the depth of the proposed excavation, the size of the site is totally unacceptable to exceed the 12.5 metre roof height by more than 15%. And then to state, make the statement that the impact of the substantial breach for neighbours is not unreasonable. We live in a residential area, zone R2, and happen to like space and sky views. In conclusion, we submit that the 12.5 metre cap should be inclusive of services on the roof. <coughs> Otherwise, where would the line be drawn? Uh, 20%? I mean, it's setting a precedent for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Do you have any questions, for Peter? No, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now, um, we've got uh, Lee Costnetta um, from LK Planning and um, the architects, Gabriel, Andrew, and the applicant here as well. Are you all addressing separately or are you here to answer questions? Could I just get some indication that all the representatives for the applicant, who and how are you going to do this? Panel Chair, I'll make a short presentation and the architects are available for questions. Thank you. And if when you're addressing, um, the appropriate person could consider some of those comments, um, especially about the um, substation and the, the heights in the plant. Um, Lee, off you go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and panel members. We're pleased to see a positive recommendation of support of this proposal by Kylie Lucas and the DBU. And of course, we accept that recommendation. We've reviewed the conditions of consent and agree with them in their entirety. Um, for the panel's uh, reference, condition 31 uh, includes a requirement for dilapidation reports and we have started investigative work to um, start those reports as well. This application was first lodged in July of last year and over the past 14 months, we've worked very collaboratively with council, making significant amendments to the proposal through two separate revisions. Um, as you're aware, the development site brings together two regular sites on Old South Head Road and an irregular battle axe block at the rear surrounded by residential properties. And therefore, any amenity impacts on these neighbours did need to be carefully managed. Setbacks and separation distances, privacy mitigation, height compliance generally to the building and the building's character have been massaged through all of these revisions in line with council's feedback. And the report concludes that we successfully managed this and recommends approval. Each revision saw a significant reduction in the scale of this development, with the final revision before you today providing 21 less units than originally proposed, 47 to 26. The FSR has been reduced by a substantial 500 square metres and is now under the maximum allowable by the affordable housing step, utilising just over half of the available FSR bonus premium. A whole building is being offered as affordable rental housing. It contains seven family-sized apartments to be, to be managed by a registered community housing provider. The allocation of these particular units is in response to 
number of meetings we've had with housing providers that have told us that there's a strong demand and a lack of supply for this particular unit type in those bay. The application relies on a clause 4.6 to vary the height standard to a minor degree. Harley's report provides a detailed assessment of the written request to vary the standard and accepts that it's well founded in this case. For the most part, the height variations are limited only to the plant and the lift overruns over a compliant roof plane, and they cause no material impacts on neighbouring properties in our view. Um, being in full agreement with the report, I was happy to forego the rest of my time and, and be available for questions along with the project architect. Um, I'll defer to the project architects in terms of the acoustic assessment of the substation. That's not something that I can answer. Um, the dilapidation condition is there in, in the plan set, in the condition set of condition 31. In relation to the provision of height and services um, above the height plane, it was a conscious decision to place those items on the roof. The council um, came to us with a specific request to visit that aspect of the development. And in consultation with our mechanical engineers, there is a significant environmental benefit of putting those services on the roof as compared to in the basement, um, inclusive of the car park exhaust, if it were in the basement, would then rely on mechanical ventilation, which would be noisy uh, in this location does not and can rely on some natural ventilation. Um, the plant and the, sorry, the lift overrun and the uh, car park exhaust are set in right. from the boundary of the building below. Um, they're all screened and the council's DCP does provide flexibility in the location of services on roofs in buildings, um, as long as they're set in from the side of the building form. So, we think we've successfully achieved that. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so we'll hear now from um, Gabrielle Melville. Only in relation so far as um, any question we can answer about the substation might be Andrew. Nice. Okay. Uh, well, do we have to, be, before we move on, I suppose, panel, do we want to ask any questions or we want to hear from everyone first and then come back? No? Okay, so if we could hear now from the architect, is it Gabriel Melville or Andrew is going to speak? Do you want me to do it? No. Uh, look, Andrew Hipwell, I'm, I'm um, a colleague of Gabby's. Um, I know a little bit about the substation. It's one of those green kiosks you see on footpaths. Um, I agree that there could be some uh, low frequency buzzing and stuff that could emanate if you're in close proximity, and that's a pretty fair point. Now, it should be noted that we're proposing a wall on the boundary that's required for fire separation between our site and the neighbour. And I guess we could um, include as a condition or have to ensure that that wall also screens, adequately screens from the, the, the affected receiver um, by direct line of sight or acoustic path, um, that that wall also deals with acoustic attenuation. So that, that would be fine. In terms of its position, um, the the advice from the service, the provider is that the thing's really got to be on the street. And we are faced with the choice of trying to put trees and landscaping bounding the footpaths as a presentable thing or put the substation. So we opted to try and tuck it around the side of the building so that it would free up planters and space for trees and shrubs on, to the footpath. So that's why it is kind of where it is. Um, but the acoustic issue, that's a fair point. Let's, um, let's try and make that firewall do an acoustic job at the same time, and hopefully that overcomes that concern. Um, Andrew, thank you for that um, honesty on that um, answer. I appreciate that. The, um, how, what, what happens if that doesn't fix it, though? What are we left with? We're left with a buzzing coming out for that. For those, oh, that oh. I suspect we we may or may not be. I, I don't know the acoustic low frequency emission profile of a transformer, but it's obviously something we'll we'll get to the bottom of and 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 understand. Um, I, I don't know how much noise these things make in the middle of the night, so I can't help you on that. I would imagine if it does buzz and you're sensitive to it, it would be just dreadful. Um, that, that, that's right. That's right. So look, um, 
surely that acoustic data is available. Um, Osgrid or whoever they are that make them surely uh, can, can tell us and then we can get an acoustician to, to deal with it. Deal with it, manage it. Um, panel questions? Jan? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, I just, um, on that question, can you actually um, enclose the um, Osgrid facility? Uh, well, the answer is yes, but I would I would say that it'd be a big visual penalty because um, the size of a of a like a ground level chamber is a pretty enormous building. In order to enclose it in a block work thing with roofs, it'd be like a giant shed on the footpath, and I just don't so think what, it's what, right. what's sorry, um, Andrew, what's the height of it? Oh, of the those green things on you see on the footpath, they must be about one point eight meters, you know, thereabouts. Okay. Okay, I'm just curious as to know what sort of level of um, noise they emit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And perhaps it's something that's fallen through the crack. Anyway, we can also check on that. Um, I have a question about the plant on the roof, and I'm a little bit unclear as to the significant environmental benefits of um, putting it on the roof, apart from hearing natural ventilation. But I'm a little bit unclear as to why it should be located on the roof. Um, best practice would tend would tell us that um, where possible it should be in basements, etc. So perhaps you could just go through that again. Uh, hmm. We received a letter from our mechanical engineer that should be in the council's package. I don't have that I don't have that in front of me at the moment, um, but it did outline um, all the technical information for those services on the roof. We've also got an energy assessment report commitment to have the development um, perform 30% better than a reference building. And to achieve that, um, this is a component to ensure that we don't have mechanical ventilation for those services that would think, otherwise be in the basement. Yeah, I think fundamentally it was that the roof mounted plant, apparently pulling air, uses considerably less energy than a, a basement mounted fan that has to push air and then have supply, makeup, pressure, fans. So I'm no expert, but I think that was something to do with the energy equation, that it was a far more energy efficient solution to roof mount the equipment. I mean, I can't add anything more than that. And do we, do we know that the noise levels generated by the plant? Uh, the, 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 screen, the screen that surrounds the plant uh, provides visual you know, concealment. Uh, as well as the opportunity to do acoustic attenuation. The inside face of those rooftop screens has, you know, fluff and whatever it needs to um, attenuate the fan noise for that direct line between the fan and any receiver. And those, those screens are at a, at, a, at a height where they basically self-shade on the roof of the building. So they're not sort of increasing so how, any... How, what's the height? What's the height of the screening around the plant? I think it varies from about, Gab might have to help me on this, about 1.2 to 1.6 metres. Is that right, Gab? Help and me on yeah, that. Yeah, up to two with the, um, with the lift over run. Up to two with the lift over run, yeah. Up to two. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the lift over run? They're next to the lift over run. Is that what you're saying? That's right. That's right. And some of the screening is at the same height so that it just became the same form on the roof. And then when it could be lower in other parts of the screen, it's it's lower. Okay, so a lift over run of two meters is quite significant. And um, is it visible from the um, from pedestrians on the street? Oh, um, from the street, no, because there's no plant on C block, and the plant from A block is set back considerably. Uh -huh. And the lift over run would clearly be visible. Uh, maybe from a certain angle on approach, but not necessarily just directly in front from the street. Okay. Right. Thanks. I'd also add just um, for the panel's attention, the approved and recently constructed buildings along this section of Old South Head Road similarly have these type of structures that pop in and out of the high plane. Uh, and it's not uncommon in this to 
Um, okay, any other questions? No. Okay, well, thank you all for coming and thank you for your time. And thank you for addressing those issues that were raised by objectors and will um, determine this application after the public hearing and with the, with the decision put up on council's website um, in the coming days. So thank you for your time, thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item is the last item today on the agenda, which is um, DA 159-2015-B, which is 98-100-102 Brighton Boulevard, North Bondi. Um, there was a number of written submissions received, which we have, and um, we have uh, one objector speaking, which is Ian Moon, who lives at 129 Hastings Parade, North Bondi. And we have a number of or two representatives here for the applicant. So if we can hear from Mr. Ian Moon first. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks, panel. Um, yes, I'm uh, the owner of Unit 6129 Hastings Parade, and I represent obviously myself and my neighbour who's on uh, Unit 5129 Hastings Parade. Um, this development's been in gestation for a long while, and this is the third time there's been amendment to the upper floor or suggested amendment to the upper floor of the development. Development exceeds the LEP height by 2.38 metres. This is the third time the applicants actually applied to increase the height of the building. Um, as I understand, the planner has recommended this go ahead. So I just want to voice my concern that council seems to be consistently ignoring the LEP in relation to this development. It's severely impacting the units behind. We obviously face south looking out across the top of the site towards Bondi Bay. Um, it, completely obscures a view for my unit, Unit 6, and I fully recognise that no one owns a view, but in fact, this development will own the view at the expense of a number of other units. So I don't know when it's going to stop, the applicant's going to stop applying to increase the height, but I just wanted to make my feelings felt um, and known to the panel. So thank you for that opportunity. Thank you. Any questions? No, we note, we note that. Um, We've got um, William Van Wick and Luke Buttonshaw. Are you both going to address or you're going to just one present? Or? I'll, I'll present and, and respond to the submission and then uh, Luke's on board to answer any queries. Thank you, when you're ready. Um, I'd like to just uh, briefly summarise the findings of the council officer's report um, before addressing uh, what we've just heard from the owner at. Uh, 6129 Hastings Parade. Um, we support the conclusions reached in the council officer's report and are willing to accept the condition relating to the side boundary wall. Uh, the proposal will provide additional deep soil landscaping, reduce excavation, and will improve the internal layout and amenity. Um, there will be no increase in overall building height, both in an absolute RL sense and above existing ground level. Um, the additional height that the um, submission before me mentioned is just the middle portion of the built form, which will be raised 350 millimetres to match the front and rear parapets. And the council officer's report recognises this will not lead to additional impacts from what was previously approved. Um, the view analysis uh, that we submitted demonstrates that the proposal will actually improve properties um, views for properties to the rear. Um, there'll be a net increase, which is primarily achieved by relocating the solar panels away from the leading edge of the front uh, towards the rear. And so um, that view analysis, uh, unfortunately, did not specifically include um, Unit 6 at 129 Hastings Parade, as the uh, photographs provided did not contain enough context to defini definitively establish an accurate view. However, given those views are taken at the same level as Apartment 5, it is anticipated that it is a similar outcome to Apartment 5, which uh, was acknowledged in the council officer's report. And um, the council officer concluded that it was not an unreasonable impact on, on views. Um, so in summary, we support the council officer's assessment and believe these modifications will further refine a quality design. Thank you. Um, did Luke want to say anything? Just if there's any queries. Um, any questions, panel? No, that's, that's all we have. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Moon, for coming along and 
Um, we do know and appreciate your concerns. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. I just okay. had one question. Yes, and that, that, that was in respect of um, the concerns that we heard from the neighbouring property or the property in the vicinity about views. Mm -hmm. And I'm just inquiring as to whether a view analysis was actually, view analysis was actually done from that property. Um, so I'm not, the objector, and no, there wasn't a, a, a view analysis done from my property, and I did provide the requisite photos, exactly the same as the unit next door. The um, applicant actually chose to do a boundary analysis on Unit 5, which is not the same as my unit, so I don't accept the findings or the statements that Williams made. Um, those, uh, uh, what, what I mentioned okay. is just from the council officer's report, um, it, and I think really the the view that we took represents a, a worst case scenario um, because of the angle of um, the uh, what was it unit five that was taken um, and it, and it shows that there's no loss of, of water view um, there is no loss of land sea interface view and there's a, a net increase in in district view um, Luke do you want to add anything yeah thanks Will. Afternoon panel. Um, just with that comment, so yeah, we, we did receive photos from both Unit 5 and Unit 6, which are two, they're at the same level directly next door to each other on the rear elevation of 129 Hastings. Uh, we used the image from provided for Unit 5 because it, it had additional two side buildings of our site which allows us to provide an accurate view analysis. The photos provided from Unit 6 were slightly more zoomed in, so the two side neighbours were not there. So from a, a 3D CAD um, setup, it's, it's hard to provide an exact representation of the view. So we did take that um, approach, and I think the council report also confirms that the views would be very similar. Um, I'll just add that the proposed raising of the middle section of the roof will have no impact to those rear neighbours. And for both properties, we do see the relocation of a number of the solar panels at the front of the building to be moved further to the back of the building will slightly improve the view. Thank you. Okay, nothing further. All right, so that's, um, thank you all for coming and for your time. And um, I'll now close the public hearing. And um, as we've said before, the determination will be made and um, placed up on the council's website um, in the coming days. So thank you. And thank you all for coming and for your time and thank you panel and staff. I think we now adjourn We'll have a, a lunch break and then we'll be back online. Um, what time are we back online? Is it two o'clock? Or maybe 2.15? Is 2.15 okay with everyone? Or, yep, okay. So we'll be back online. At, Joe, is that fine, 2.15? Uh, yeah, that's up to you what time you want to start. So Is that you... fine with it? That's half an hour or do you want shorter? No. Okay. I don't mind, whatever suits. Okay, all right. Well, let's make it 2.15 and um, we'll be back then. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. See you then. All right. All right. Thank you.